This is the Sage Fixed Assets Depreciation Module. In this module, you'll be able to manage your fixed assets depreciation requirements from the time they are placed in service until their life cycle has completed. This asset snapshot will give you a quick overview of what's going on with all of your company's assets. You can see what's placed in service by quarter and compare acquired value versus accumulated depreciation. Also, you can see a five-year span and a breakdown of the remaining life of your fixed assets. Managing your fixed assets in the depreciation module is quite easy. There are 28 general information fields that you can use to capture details about your fixed assets, including an asset ID number, its location, asset class, GL account information, and all other requirements for your depreciation needs. Additionally, you can also capture your IRS property types, your in-service date, acquired value, depreciation methods, and estimated life. There are currently 52 depreciation methods built into the solution, and you can easily create custom depreciation methods. It also supports bonus depreciation and Section 179. You can capture transactions such as disposals and transfers on the Transactions tab. You can include notes and attach images, invoices, receipts, and more. Sage Fixed Assets supports a variety of file types including PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs, and bitmaps. It allows you to link a single image or invoice to multiple assets. Adding assets can be easy, especially with the use of templates. You can create as many templates as you choose. To add an asset, select Add Asset and manually populate information in the General Information fields. You can also use templates. Within your template, include information such as a description, GL account information, asset class, and any other information you choose. Additionally, you can include book fields such as property types, depreciation methods, and lives. Using a template, you would enter an acquisition date, a placed in service date, and the value to be pushed out across all the books. This asset is now ready to be placed in service. You can attach an image of the asset or an invoice from the image manager. You can save the information and this asset is now ready to start depreciation. If you have multiple assets, you can choose to replicate it. For example, if you have 10 laptops to add, you can replicate the asset nine times. That would provide you with 10 new assets. For this example, let's replicate it twice to give us a total of three laptops. Click OK. You can now go to the asset list view to see that three laptops have now been added. Let's take a look at transfer or disposal of assets. Let's do a sample disposal of an asset. Click Dispose Asset and choose your disposal date. You can complete a disposal by sale, abandonment, taxable exchange, casualty and lifetime exchange. You can do a full or partial disposal. If you're doing a partial disposal, you would select Yes here. In this example, let's complete a full disposal Enter cash proceeds, expense of sale, and click Calculate. Your gain loss will be calculated across all the books. You can preview the disposal worksheet prior to committing to the disposal. In the disposal worksheet, it will capture your net proceeds, gain loss information, as well as any 168 or Section 179 information relative to your disposal. Click OK. The Transactions tab will now display the completed disposal by sale. It will capture your cash proceeds, non-cash, and expensive sale information. Since this was an example of a full disposal, the status has changed to Disposed. 
All of the book fields will now be grayed out as this asset is now fully disposed. If you view the History tab, it will indicate the asset has been fully disposed as of today's date. The date completed in the solution will be separate from the actual disposal date. The solution will also capture any cash proceeds, non-cash or expensive sale information, and the history will remain until the information has been purged. If, for example, you were provided the wrong asset ID information and you need to undo this transaction, you can go to the Transactions tab, delete Last Transaction, and the disposal will be reversed. If you go back to the main asset details, you will see everything has been restored to previous values. If you view the History tab, you will see the disposal information for today's date is still there. A new entry will be created indicating the last transaction was deleted, and it will include when it was done and who completed it. You can also complete partial disposals where some portion of the value of the asset is disposed. In this scenario, you would select Yes to indicate this is a partial disposal. Here you would click Tab and enter the value of the portion that needs to be disposed. Enter a description, click OK, enter your cash proceeds, if there are any, and click Calculate and then OK. Now a portion of the asset's value has been disposed. The status has now changed to partial, and you will see the remaining value will continue to depreciate. If you go to the History tab, it will capture the partial disposal information, and it will also indicate the changes to the book fields. If there is a different cost basis between the books, they will be listed separately. In this example, the internal book has a different cost basis from the other and is listed separately. Since this is a partial disposal, the remaining value will continue to be used to calculate depreciation. You can delete the last transaction and everything will be restored to the previous values. You can also dispose of multiple assets at once by using any of the fields to conduct a search. You can now select all of the assets or use the shift key to select a specific group of assets where you can now complete a bulk disposal of all the assets. Again, you can do this by sale abandonment, taxable exchange or casualty. When disposing of assets in a group in this manner, any cash, non-cash or expensive sale will be split across all assets, but it will still calculate the gain losses individually based on the current netbook value. Transferring assets can be simple. To transfer an asset within your current company, determine which field you would like to use as the main field to be updated when completing the transfer. In this example, let's use the location field, but you can also click yes to edit general information here. You can update any other pertinent information that may change. You can also transfer assets between companies, and you can process it as a disposal, so that it reflects as a disposal in the company it was leaving, and a transfer to the other company. For example, you could use the fair market value here, or current netbook value, for your cash proceeds, and the gain loss will be calculated accordingly. You can also transfer multiple assets at once, The solution has very robust reporting. You can generate an actual 4562. This is the actual fileable 4562. It can also generate the schedule that goes along with it. You will have both pages for the correct fiscal year and the detail schedule as well. There's also a tax expense report which can be used to reconcile your 4562 as it will capture your 168 and 179 expense. The solution also includes a great sale of property report or 4797 worksheet that will actually break everything down in the correct section property. Your 1245-1250 property and ordinary gain losses 
will be captured on the second page. There are many robust reports built into the solution, and you can customize these reports. For example, you can sort and subtotal by any of the fields. You can add or remove columns of data and save it as a custom report. The standard report is the one with the white notebook symbol next to it. The ones with a yellow notebook symbol are customized versions of the original. In this particular depreciation expense report, the current netbook value and a summation were added at the end and the orientation was changed. You can change the header and footer information as well. Let's go ahead and run the standard version of the depreciation expense report, which will capture your prior depreciation through date, current depreciation through date, and your depreciation this run information, along with other helpful information. It will also capture your section 179 or 168 allowance information, your prior accumulated depreciation, current accumulated depreciation information, and a total will be indicated at the bottom. It is simple to run your journal entry report here. All the reports on the solution are exportable to multiple formats. The formats you can export to include Crystal Reports, PDF, CSV file, Excel or Excel data only, the old or new version, XLS or XLSX format. You also have the ability to build custom reports, ad hoc reports, and crystal reports where you can access any field in the database and create graphs. You can literally create any type of report you may need. The solution has great references. If you go to Help, What's New, and click on Learn More, you're able to see what taxual changes are included in the current release. In this scenario, all of the new changes from the Further Consolidated Appropriations Act and all of the tax extender updates are listed. You can also look up all the tables surrounding Section 179 expense limits for each fiscal year. The solution is quite flexible and intuitive. It even includes an audit advisor that you can run at any point to see what is happening with the assets in your company. If you have any conditions that are a potential red flag for you to get audited, the solution will generate an exception. It will highlight the issue as well as recommend a resolution. In this scenario, the limits for Section 179 have been exceeded for that fiscal year, which was a $1 million in 2018. I tried to take $5.675 million for that fiscal year. Let's go to My List View where those groups were created. These are all of the assets that are creating that exception. And you can see in this particular one, a 700,000 deduction as well as all of the others and a 675,000 deduction in this asset. Combined, the limits have been exceeded. You can make corrections and be ready for your fiscal year end with no problem.